There's a great scene in The Lion King where the spirit of Mufasa, the dead king, speaks one night to his prodigal son, Simba. Simba has been hiding out in the deepest, darkest jungle, reclining in a life of selfishness and ease. He's quite forgotten that he was born to be a king. So the ghost of his father challenges his complacency. And he says to him, you have become less than you are. In our first reading today, the prophet Amos challenges the people of Israel. Lying on the beds of ivory, they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. They have become complacent. They have become indifferent. The gospel we just heard, Jesus tells us of the rich man who dresses in purple garments and linen, dining sumptuously every day, but allowing Lazarus to lay at his door, not even giving him the scraps off his table. The rich man forgot. He was indifferent, complacent. He forgot that we're all in this world together. It's very easy to forget. It's very easy to become complacent. When all goes well for us, it's simple to forget that there is a much larger world out there, that there are needs that we are all challenged to confront in some way. Sometimes we just forget that we are all responsible for the common good. Woody Allen's latest movie, and I think one of his best, is now playing entitled Blue Jasmine. It's a great film, and Kate Blanchett is amazing as she plays a middle-aged narcissistic widow. And the themes of this weekend's scriptures just permeate the entire movie. Kate Blanchett's character is complacent. She fantasizes a storybook life. She was married to a villain, apparently based on Bernie Madoff. The film begins with her in denial, completely lacking empathy with normal people. But all too quickly, her elitist facade crumbles. And though she's not guilty of her husband's crimes, she was certainly an enabling accomplice. She looked the other way. And she looked the other way all for the sake of creature comforts. She lived a wonderful life of pure illusion and complacency as a pampered New York socialite. But she falls from grace due to her total lack of perspective. She reminds us of the rich man in today's gospel. Everything in her life was an illusion and she self-destructs, and in the process destroys so many people around her. It's easy to forget. It's easy to become complacent. When all is going well, it's easy not to see that there's a much larger world out there that we are all somehow responsible for. I think it's rather apparent that we are all living at a time in history today where our world could explode at any moment. It's very interesting, just two weeks ago when our president was preparing to address us as a nation regarding the intervention in Syria. Well, NBC rushed to assure its viewers that the Ryan Seacrest hosted game show, The Million Second Quiz, would not be interrupted. NBC assured us that the president would speak only 15 minutes and that viewers could watch their televisions with full confidence that the entirety of the hyped up program would be fully protected. Now there was some suspense as to whether NBC would follow through on its promise of an unbroken telecast, but the presidential coverage stayed within the agreed upon time slot and viewers were able to watch their regularly scheduled programs. 
and all was well with the world. Just think of it, though. If we're more interested in watching Ryan Seacrest give away dollars than listening to the president share his life or death plans for our global neighbors, then we have to ask ourselves what is happening to us, to our society, to our culture. Have we become that complacent and that indifferent? Or perhaps, perhaps it's just so overwhelming for all of us that we need game shows to hide behind and make believe that all is right in the world. It's very easy to be complacent, to be complacent in married life, to be complacent in family life, at work, with our neighbors. As long as we have a job, as long as we have food on our table, as long as we are healthy, it's very easy to fantasize that everything is right with the world. Now, I'm not saying that we have to live lives of doom and gloom, not at all. But we are each called to respond to the common good in our own way and accept our responsibility to reach out to those in need. But so often, just like Simba, it's so much easier to hide out in the deepest, darkest jungle and to be less than what we are called to be. We here at the Cathedral have been reflecting the last few years on our ministry to the hungry, to the homeless, to the poor. We have made some changes in our outreach to ensure that we are being of service and not duplicating and not spending your money wastefully. So after much deliberation, we have collaborated with Catholic Charities to run our Cathedral Emergency Services, and we have moved our Wednesday morning Oxford Inn breakfast program to combine it with the Samaritan Center. And you will see in our bulletin that we are encouraging the use of your money given to us or to the Samaritan Center, Catholic Charities, Oxford Inn Rescue Mission, all these agencies who provide food for the homeless. There should be no one going hungry in our city. There are plenty of agencies that provide food for the homeless. Unfortunately, we do not help the panhandlers who stand in front of our cathedral by giving them money. Unfortunately, 99% of that money does go to alcohol and to drugs. But we are reaching out, and there are better ways to reach out than that. Today, I think we all have to accept the reality, the fact that we are a global world. We are a global world with technology that does not allow us to, to hide behind the bliss of ignorance. We all have a calling, and perhaps the scriptures this weekend are telling all of us that at times we are all tempted to be less than what we are called to be. So the scriptures this weekend challenge us not to look the other way. We are living in extremely complicated times. Isn't it unbelievable that mass shootings have become commonplace in our society? It's so darn tempting to hide in the deepest, darkest jungle and pretend that the world is fine. But we know that Syria and the Middle East continue to threaten the peace of the entire world. And here just last week or the week before, the House of Representatives, they voted to cut food stamps by $40 billion. Now that's a program that has kept 4 million people out of poverty this past year. And it's important that we really understand the fact that the majority of the food stamps go to working families with young children and that they are usually only on the program temporarily during hard economic times. Now, the scriptures this weekend challenge all of us. And perhaps the most important battle to be won in the midst of all of our societal challenges is the fight against our complacency and our indifference. We need to stay fully engaged. 
We must not be like the Israelites lying on their beds of ivory, not made ill by the collapse of Joseph, nor like the rich man forgetting that Lazarus lies right at his doorstep. The stakes are way too high, the costs of mistakes are way too deep, and the value of human life is far too priceless. Elie Wiesel said it best, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. So the scriptures this weekend challenge us to not hide out in the deepest and darkest jungles, but to become more than what we are called to be.